All right, man, let's talk about uh, what is the correct uh, fit for a backcourt running mate for Kate Cunningham. A lot of people got uh, different opinions on who should be on the backcourt with Kate Cunningham, what position Kate Cunningham is. Is he a one guard? I mean, is he a two guard? Could he be a three? What is he? A lot of people say, well, he's been listed as a point guard his whole career. They lose it. They look at Luka Doncic, you know, as the uh, you know as the the marker. But like I said before, um, I think with his versatility, I mean, I think you know, it would, you know, whatever you know, whatever he feel comfortable with, whatever they feel comfortable with, at this point. It, it don't really matter. But we talking about ideally as far as uh the ideal uh, running mate with him. Um mm. I mean I mean you can put a smaller guard next to him if you want to. A lot of people don't like that because they defensive liabilities, switches and you know, try to attack them. I mean, um you know, I mean you can put a pure two guard, a lot of people like Benedict Matherin. Next to him, somebody that slash and get to the rim, just catch and shoot. Uh, I think the number one thing you were looking at in the backcourt with him is somebody that can take on the tough assignments, who can defend the tougher assignments out there. So that's what you're looking for, somebody who can defend the tougher assignments. So, you know, that's one thing you're looking at, somebody that can defend the combo guards, the true points, the the two guards, you know, somebody that's, that's, that's good defensively good, length, Good feet, good height. That's what you. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're looking for. Somebody that can that can defend that. Uh, that can defend, and also somebody that's athletic. Kay Cunningham, he's solid. He a big dude. You know, he get to the rim. But you're looking for somebody that that's athletic that can explode to the rim, take you off the uh, take you off the dribble. You know, what I'm saying, you know, somebody can play with or without the basketball. You know, so you don't, you know, do you want Kate having the ball every time up to coming down the court? Yeah, I mean, I guess you could, but, you know, sometimes you probably want to utilize his ability to move off ball, his ability to post up, his ability to, you know, cut without the basketball, backdoor cut. You, you probably want to use that, you know, or you, you can use him as a, as a, as a floor spacer. Um, his, his ability is infinite. As an offensive player, you can post him. You know, you can run, you can run the you can run the you can run the offense, you know. So like I said before, people forget Isaiah never, you know, Isaiah didn't always run the offense down the on down the down the court every time. Sometimes they gave it to Danley. Uh sometimes, you know, Joe Dumars did his thing. So um so it's interesting, but you know, I think somebody that can defend, somebody that can shoot, somebody that's athletic or got good shooting potential, and I think that's what you're looking at. That's you looking at. They need to get off uh, offensive and they need to get more explosive offensively. Um, you know, somebody can run up and down the court. So yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you got a number of options out there. I mean, you got guys like Malik Monk, you know, who might not fetch the max. You know, you got guys like Gary Payton the second, you know, you got guys like Zach Levine, which he showed he could play without the basketball and with the basketball. So, you know, with Kay Cunningham, you know, most quote unquote, most people mind may not be a pure ball handling point guard. I mean, you could put a pure point guard next to him, and I don't think – I think he'd be good. But I just think you want somebody that could defend a tougher matchup, somebody athletic, somebody that could slash, somebody that could, you know, shoot or potentially could shoot and get to the rim. So, like I said before, a lot of people thought Killian was going to be, you know, pretty good in the backcourt, but he couldn't catch a shoot and he couldn't run the offense. So, like I said before, I mean, you got Colin Sexton, you know, who he liked to have a ball in his hand all the time. <laughs> Could be a problem. Couldn't be a problem. You guys like Zach Levine can play with or without the ball. You got guys like Jalen Brunson, who proved in Dallas he can play with or without the ball. You know, that's one thing people got a concern about with Jay Nivey. You know, can he play without the basketball? Is he going to hog the ball too much? So, um, I don't know, man. That's, that's an excellent question. Excellent question, but I think more people are thinking more of Benedict Mather and three and D. Well, he don't defend, but defensive potential type of guy. I mean, I like a guy like Johnny Davis, you know, somebody who can handle the ball, get their shot, post up. I mean, like I said before, you know, I think you could do – I think whatever you ask K, what he comfortable doing. But what you don't want K dominating the basketball every time down the court and being like Luka Donitich and not knowing how to use his teammates. So – 
you don't want to just limit him, limit him just from being, you know, a ball dominant point guard, high pick and roll, and looking looking for the green light special all the time. So, but um, like I said before, man, you know, somebody that could defend, somebody that's athletic, somebody that's shooter, shooting potential, get to the rack. Okay, Cunningham, he you know he can get to the rack, he can get his own offense, but. Like I said, if you get somebody to take somebody off the dribble and explode to the rack and get to the free throw line, that's exactly what the Pistons meet need. You know, somebody can play above the rim. You know, that's one thing they ain't got. You know, so they they need somebody that can you know that's explosive, that can get to the rim, that can finish at the rim. They need that. You know, and obviously you're not probably gonna get that. You know, with Sneak Baby and out there, K Cunningham can do that, get to the rim, blow past people. And some and some of the other stuff that he, you know he can do, um, that he can do. But I just think you know I don't think he needs somebody that's just gonna go out there slash and catch a shoot. I think he needs somebody else that's gonna create his own offense. That's gonna make the backcourt nice. Now, is it gonna be a mesh period between them? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. You know how many times you know you look at the greatest backcourts in NBA. You know Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. You know one you know one of the greatest, not the greatest. You know there was some type of Meshing period. It took them a while to, to get it done. You know, he, you know, he can, you know, takes a while to get it done. So I think it can be done. A lot of people say, well, gee, no, you know, mean, this just don't make no sense. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. You know, Kay Cunningham can literally be a two guard and, and not blink. He can go to being a point guard and not blink. Jay Nivey, the way he should be starting to shoot the ball, I mean, he can catch the shoot off the dribble. He can slash to the rim. Or you can isolate and get another bucket. Who else you gonna isolate on this team? Not named Jeremy Grant, which he suck at it anyway. <clears throat> K. Cunningham. So you need somebody else that's gonna take you to the bucket and explode to the bucket. So that'd be a nice that'd be a nice little fit. It's gonna be it's gonna be a transition period for sure. Two ball handlers in the backcourt, but you know you can make it work. You can make it work. I mean, but you know, Bronson, you know, he's a great example. He, you know, he played next to Luka Donatich and he made it work. You know. And he made it work. But Zach Levine, you know, let DeMar DeRosa shine. He let it, he let it work. He made he let he made he made it work. Was able to make the extra passes and still be effective. So I mean. So um but yeah, I mean, like I said before, man, you can go, you know, if you're gonna go with pure shooting guard, you know, coming off screens, catch and shoot, somebody like Reggie Miller, you know, I don't, it really don't matter, bro. I just think that the things they need is somebody that's gonna be athletic and somebody that's gonna defend, you know, and not a liability offensively. And hey, Ivy, check those boxes off. He can be a great defender. So, you know, explosive, shifty, you need that guy. That's gonna open it up for Kay Cunningham now. He do got to get better at passing, but you know, you line him up with Sexton and Bronson, you know that the, the six four, the athleticism, you know what I'm saying. So, so it's just gonna be unlocking the rest of his game. Him as a passer, I mean, right away he got to come in and be the guy. But like I said before, man, somebody can defend, athletic, can shoot. That's what you're looking at. Actually, they may not be the greatest defensive player right now, you know what I'm saying, but. uh you know, like I said, they might not be the greatest defensive player right now, but got the potential. Might not be the greatest shooter right now, but got to be the potential. So, I mean, no. So, to me, that's interesting. So, but, yeah, you know, it's a lot of this, you know, obviously uh, just different fits out there. But, you know, you look at Bronson, you say, well, you know, he can catch a shoot, he can get to the rim. But defensively, most people feel like he's a, he's a liability. Kyle Sexton, you know, somebody that can, can shoot it, but he's somebody that great. You know, he's one of the rhythm guys. You know, he's one of the rhythm guys. You know, he like to you know get the ball. You know, he like to, he like to create for himself. I like to attack the rim, step back, and all that. So, I mean, no, he one of you know one of them type of guys. But it can work with that too. Um, I mean, like I said before, it don't have to be a, a ripple Rich Hamilton type of guy. Like I said, Joe Dumars and Isaiah Thomas both brought the ball up the court. They both ran the offense. And even with Adrian Dantley at one point. You know, he was able to do his thing and 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 and, and handle the ball and, and do what he needed to do. So I mean throughout history, you you've seen it before. 
Now you had a situation with Montez, Monte, Monte Ellis, and um, Steph Curry couldn't work. You had situations where um, you had situations where uh, CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard didn't work. It didn't work because they didn't. It didn't. They didn't you know, McCullough was somebody that, that could be a lead guard, too. He could handle the ball, get a shot, could make some passes here to there and, 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 and stuff of that nature. Um, but him and Damian Lillard worked perfect in the backcourt together. You know, they you know they, they, they was brothers back there. And they both pretty much was the same type of guard. But, but what happened was they couldn't defend nobody. That's why defense is, is really, really key there. You know, you don't, you know, you don't really want to have no weak spots defensively, you know, on your team where they can switch and take advantage of somebody. And if you if you got if you got those type of guys, then you have to be able to to clean up some of the deficiencies there. You see what I'm saying? You know, you gotta be able to, he gotta be an effort guy, he gotta be willing to defend. And like I said with Jay and Ivy, man, you won't you wouldn't have that problem. Six four long, as long as as long as he as long as he bought in, you'll be good. As long as he bought into the program, you will be A1. So, you know, like I said before, now you go to a more traditional tool, you say, well, how would him and Johnny Davis fit in your opinion? Great question. How much? I mean, whew, interesting. Johnny Davis, somebody who liked to get his own shot. You know, he don't. he's not the greatest spacer. You know, but he, he get better as a shooter, but – like I said, him and you know Devin Booker and uh, Devin Booker and uh, Chris Paul work. They both like to have the basketball. And Johnny Davis would you know it'd be the same thing with with uh, it'd be the same thing with 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 uh, old buddy. It'd be the same thing with Jay Knight. But Johnny Davis just a better mid range player. You know, he, you know, you know, isolate the side of the floor. You let him work on the side of the floor, post up, and he'll find a way to get his shot. So like I said before, I mean they you know, a lot of people just want somebody that's gonna go back there, defend, do the dirty bird, catch a shoot, and you know, somebody, you know, that's why I like Benedict Matthew so much, but you know, he don't defend at a high level yet, you know. You gotta teach him to defend. And then he didn't come in at six six and you know, like I said before, Tyson Daniels, he more of a of a of a you know three than a, you know his athleticism screen three more three. He can't shoot. He a passer. I mean, you can go up and down the scale of the draft and free agency. I think him and Levine work perfectly, but you know you gonna spend that type of money on Zach Levine. Had a couple injuries throughout his career, but you know him and Levine will be would be a a, a very very. Uh, a very, a, a, a very it'd be a great it'd be a good fit i ain't gonna lie it'd be a good fit so you know but you want a bigger guard back there with him that's my opinion you want a bigger guard back to six four ish you know but you you find you find ways you find ways um you find ways you find ways you find ways to make it fit like i said as long as you know you get another willing, you know, really willing defender back there, that's that's really the only, um, that's really the only deficiencies that I really see, you know, you know. But that's the only deficiencies I really see there. So, I mean, I said, man, anything can go. But I would I would ask Kay Cunningham what he was comfortable with. Honestly, sit down with them, ask them what you're comfortable with. You want to be the lead guard? You mind sharing the ball? Like I said, it's been multiple. Um, there's been multiple. Uh, there's been multiple backcourts throughout history that's been successful with with multiple back ball handlers. I mean, offenses. I think at one point you had Dumars, Danley, Isaiah. So. It was a different game back then because they knew how to play basketball. They knew what I moved out the basketball. They knew how to space the floor. They knew when to cut. Um, I mean, Steph. I mean, uh, 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 Damian and CJ McCullough. The only deficiency they had, they was just too little defensively. Nobody just wanted to lock in and just be the, and just sacrifice and be defensive. So, you got a great star with a bigger uh, guy than K Cunningham around six six. Um, 
Like I said before, you can go, you can you you can go three and D guy like a Derek Fisher or a bigger bigger guy like that. People see big Ben Nick Matherin, you know, being around that. I mean, you go Johnny Davis, somebody that's you know in, you know more of a score. You go Jay Nivey, somebody more of a score. But if he can develop his playmaking, he'd be that much deadlier. So like I said, you just take the talent and you figure you, you ask K hey, what are you comfortable with. You make what you find a way to make it work. But they got to get better defensively, shooting, and athletically. You know, you don't have to check all those boxes right now. You're not going to win a championship next year. But, uh, you know, but what you do want to do is you want to start checking some of them boxes off because when this team start winning significant games, it's not going to be because um, they're they going to score 120, they're going to score 110. It's going to be because they're going to be able to get critical stops. You know how the third quarter was the quarter they lost a lot of games this season in? Um that, that you know, if you lock in defensively, that that won't happen. If you lock in defensively, that won't happen. Trust me, if you lock in defensively, that won't happen. So, like I said, when this team's kind of started to put it together, it's gonna be on the defensive end. That's what's gonna happen. That's when they're gonna lock in. That's when they're gonna lock in defensively. When they get they be able to get a stop, but they gotta get better defenders. You know, K, solid, Bay gotta get better defensively. You know, then in, in you know, in the middle of the defense, they gotta get somebody that's gonna anchor it, defend the rim, hold it down, rebound, make it a no fly zone. Um so uh, you know, something to look at there, man. But uh let me know what you girls and guys think in your opinion. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. And that subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance. Get notifications. We go live and drop a video. Finance you want to support the channel. Cash out. Dollar sign. CJ Good 313. Venmo. CJ Good 313. PayPal link description. Um, but uh, other than that, me go hit the link tree. Find me on uh, Anchor, Spotify, Facebook, Instagram. Um, cash up in my PayPal there. Check out Detroit Pistol Top Players more videos like this. Peace.